morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Kids Town Live. My name is Pastor Eric, and I'm the children's pastor here at our church, Kingwood First Baptist. I am so glad that you tuned in this morning, and I'm excited to share Kids Town worship with you today. Well, let me just start by saying this. I got sunburned. I'm sure you can tell I'm a little red around the neck and on the back of my neck and my ears. Oh man, I went golfing with some friends and we had so much fun. But you know what? The wind was blowing and the sun kept coming out and we got sunburned, even on my arms too. Who would figure? We live in Kingwood, Texas and last week, last week we closed down the streets because they were frozen. This week, I got to go golfing. Ha! Huh, who knew, right? Well, we have been talking about the attributes of God. In fact, that's our whole lesson series for the month of February. And we have learned a lot. We've learned that an attribute is this. It's a quality, a character, a characteristic about something or someone. So when we're talking about the attributes of God, the characteristics of God, we're talking about what makes him him and what makes him unique. So we've learned a lot already. We've learned that God is all powerful. We learned that God is all loving. We learned last week that God is all knowing. And this week, we have something new to learn. In fact, let me just tell you guys, if we learn something new about God every day, it would take a whole bunch of days, probably more than we could count to learn everything there is to know about God. So we're gonna start off with a new good, well, not a new good morning song, but a good morning song that we haven't sang in several weeks. It's called, This Is The Day. And you know what, guys? This is the day. This is the day for us to worship together. So jump on your feet, get ready to worship God, and sing with me. guys and let me tell you this is the day it's the day that the Lord has made for us well when we talk about the attributes of God there are certain things about God that everyone needs to know in fact knowing about God is not just reserved for church people it's something that everyone in the entire world needs to know whether you're young or old or you live in America or you live in China whether you are very handsome like Pastor Eric, no, I'm just joking. Whoever you are, guess what? You need to know about God and his attributes. So there are five that I want you to know, okay? Number one is this. There is no one, no thing, no being like God anywhere ever. He stands alone. Now, there are a lot of really cool things in the world and the universe, but none of them compare to God because none of them are like God. Only God is made of God stuff, right? Okay, here we go. Rule number two. Thing I want you to know is this. God's attributes never change. 
He will always be the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He will not change, which is great news for us because we don't have to wonder if God's going to be different tomorrow. We can know that for every day, for all eternity, his attributes can always be counted on. Okay, here we go. You ready? Number three. Now, this is the one that hurts my brain, and I tell you that every week, but here we go. You ready? God has always been. Right? God has always been. There has never been a time when God was not. That means he was never born, and it also means he will never die. It means that he stands alone. There's nothing else like him in that. That's what makes him God. That's why we call him God. That's what makes him special and unique. All right, here we go. You ready? Number four. Number four is this. God and the devil are not equal in any way. See, they're not even made of the same stuff. The devil, well, he actually wasn't the devil at first. He started out as an angel, but then he made bad choices and he rebelled against God and he became the devil. Well, He's not made of God's stuff. In fact, he was created. And so, while there is good and evil in the world, and good tries to outdo evil, and evil tries to outdo good, and we see that in front of us all the time, there will be a day when God says, Stop! No more! And he's going to take all that is evil, and all the things that choose to do bad and evil, and stop them. Snap his fingers and just say, We're done! No more opportunities. You're done. And when that happens, it'll all be over for the devil and for those who do evil. It won't be a fight. It won't be God versus the devil. No, nope. God is God. And when he says we're done, we're done. Okay, here we go. That was number four. Here's number five. You ready? God's attributes make all of his promises true. Whew. Guys, listen. Let me tell you. I can't tell you how important this one is. That because he doesn't change, his promises always come true. So when we read God's word and we read a prom we read when we read a promise, we can know that guess what? It will always be true, and God never ever breaks a promise. That's one of his attributes. So we've talked about the main idea, and we have a motion for that. But I'm just gonna do the motion this time. I'm not going to do the words. Let's see if you can remember the words, okay? Here we go, you ready? Okay, one more time, you ready? Did you remember the words? Do you know what they are? Okay, last time, here we go, I'm gonna do the words this time, you ready? Say it real loud, you ready? Everyone needs to know who God is. Everybody does. We talked about that a little bit earlier. It doesn't matter if you live in China or Texas, which is the greatest place in the world. It doesn't matter if you're old or young. Everybody needs to know who God is. Hey, we've seen this video before, but check it out. It's a great one. It reminds us and tells us about some of the attributes of God. It's really neat.
So guys, we have learned about God, and we've learned that He is all-powerful, all-loving, all-knowing. So who can guess what the attribute is for today? What are we going to learn about God today? Any guesses? Okay, check it out. We're going to play a little game to see if you can figure it out. Here's how it works. We've done this before the last couple of weeks. This is how well do you know Pastor Eric? How well do you know me? And can you get, guess my answers? So here's the deal. I'm going to show you two things that are true and a third thing that is not true. So you have choice A, B, or C. All you have to do is guess which one is wrong, which one is not true. Now listen, I'm going to try to trick you. I am. I'm going to speak about all three of these things like I have done them. But one of them is not quite true. Well, not true at all. Okay, so here we go. Number one, which one of these is false? A, I have been to Australia, down under, right? Man, let me tell you, it is amazing and the wildlife is fantastic. B, I have been to Egypt, Cairo to be exact. Or C, I have been to Germany. I ate German food, I drank some amazing hot chocolate there and even drove around. Which one of these is false? I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Did you guess Australia? If you did, you'd be right. I have never been to Australia. I would like to go sometime, but whoo, it is a long flight. I have friends who've been before. Okay, so question number two. Which one of these is false? A, I have snorkeled in the Bahamas. Now snorkeling is whenever you wear the mask and the little tube, the snorkel that goes up. It's not scuba diving, but it is snorkeling, right? So I've scuba, I, not scuba, I've snorkeled in the Bahamas. B, I have snorkeled in Mexico. Or C, I have snorkeled in Fiji. Oh, let me tell you, all three of these places have amazing water, amazing fish, amazing sand and beaches, and amazing snorkeling. Now, which one is not true though? I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. If you said C, you would be correct. I have never been to Fiji. I have been to the Bahamas and I have been to Mexico and snorkeled at both of those places. Okay, here we go, you ready? Last question, number three. How well do you know me, okay? A, I have driven a four-wheeler. You know, four wheels, haha, <laughs> I'm just joking, okay. I've driven a four-wheeler. B, I've driven a motorcycle, you know, <laughs> Or C, I have driven a jet ski. You know. <laughs> so all three of these have handlebars. All three of these have one driver. And sometimes you have somebody behind you, but you have one driver and you have to use the handlebars to steer, right? So which one have I not done? Driven a four-wheeler, driven a motorcycle, or driven a jet ski? I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. That's right, guys. I have never driven a motorcycle. How did you do? How well do you know me? Okay. So did you figure it out? Did you figure out what our attribute is today? Okay, here it is. You ready? The first question was, uh, where have I been? Okay. The second question is, where have I been and been snorkeling? The third question is, what have I ridden on? Well, the riding part is something that takes you to a place. The snorkeling is a place where I've gone underwater and the other places are places where I traveled in a plane. And guess what? Today we're talking about this. We're talking about that God is everywhere. So whether you ride in a plane or whether you ride on a motorcycle, whether you're under the water or whether you're on the other side of the world, guess what? God is everywhere. <laughs> and man, we have a great lesson for you this morning. I can't wait to share it with you. But before we do, we have a new song. It's called, you ready? Yesterday, Today, and Forever. It's from a group called Seeds, and they make worship songs directly from Scripture. And this song comes out of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Join me as we sing.
yesterday and today and forever. singing guys. Well, hey, guess what? It is time for us to open our Bibles. So grab yours. I've got mine right here. And today we're going to be in Psalm 139. Now I know what you're saying, Pastor Eric. We were in Psalm 139 last week. You're right. We were. But we're going back because Psalm 139 teaches us a lot about God and a lot about his attributes and about who he is. So remember, you can find the book of Psalms by using your table of contents. You can flip right to the front that's always a cool way to do that. Or you can use my little shortcut. Take your Bible, hold it up to the back, split it right down the middle, and that should be the book of Psalms right there. Awesome. So we're going to be in the book of Psalms, chapter 139. Psalms 139, verses 7 through 10. All right, y'all go ahead and start turning there. I found, oh, I found mine right here. <clears throat> okay, Psalm 139, verses 7 through 10. Now you know how I feel about Psalms. I love them. I think they're full of wonder. They're full of emotion. They teach us how to connect with God, how to talk to God, and they teach us a lot about who God is and his attributes. And I think that with 150 chapters in the book of Psalms, it's good to read one every day. Okay, so Psalm 139, verse 73. Everybody there? You make it so far? Okay, here it is. Psalm 139, 7 through 10. Here's what it says. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Wow, guys, did you see that? Did you see what he said? He said, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I go from your presence? And then he says, nowhere. So it is a great time for us to pray. We played a game, we shared, we sung some worship time. We just read his word. And now let's take an opportunity to speak to him, okay? So do me a favor, bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, God, we love you. And we thank you for loving us. And we thank you for your faithfulness. And God, we thank you for your attributes that you are always loving, you are all powerful, you are all knowing, and you are everywhere. God, that makes us brave. It makes us feel amazing knowing how big and awesome you are. Thank you for being so awesome, Lord. We love you, amen. So guys, we are learning that God is everywhere. And see, in my house, we have a family of five, and I love being with my family. It makes me so very happy. But you know, I have family in other places too. I have family that live in other parts of Texas and I love them. So how cool is it that I can know that whenever I pray to God, he hears me. And that whenever my family in another town prays to God, he hears them all at the same time. That God not only knows everything, but he is everywhere. So that whether your family is here or there, or maybe you have friends all the way in Thailand, who knows, right? That God is able to be all of those places at the same time. So there's a really big word that um, describes this. It's called omnipresent. Now, I don't expect you to remember that, but omnipresent essentially means this, always there, like he's everywhere all of the time. So God's presence is bigger than everything. The Spirit of God his ability to be everywhere at the same time means that he is bigger than all of the universe. He is everywhere that can be known. If you can be there, his presence is there. Okay, you ready? And here's something that's going to blow your mind. Another boop moment. You ready? God is not just on earth and in space and in all the other planets. Guess what? All of space in all of the universe 
is contained in God. Wow. Did you hear that? God is bigger than our universe, bigger than anything we can possibly imagine. That's part of what makes him God. Oh, so here we go. God, a couple of things we're looking at today is that God is always everywhere. God cannot be contained. We are not separated by God by distance, but our heart. We'll get to that in just a second. And God can always hear our prayers, no matter where we are. Okay, so we've learned a lot so far. That's a little preview about what we're about to talk about. But first, here's a little quick quiz with the scramble. Now the scramble is this. We're gonna talk about the attributes of God and then I'm gonna put a word and I'm gonna scramble up the letters. I'm gonna give you some clues and then you're gonna to try to figure out what it says. Good luck. How'd you do guys? Did you get them all? Awesome. The more we learn about God, the more awesome he becomes. So here we go. You ready? God is always everywhere, right? God never takes a day off and he never ever limits himself. God is everywhere because he is, well, God. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 24, here's what it says. You ready? Am I a God at hand? declares the Lord, and not a God far away. Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. Did you see what he said? Can a man hide himself from me? No, God knows where everybody is. Why? Because God knows everything, but he's also everywhere. It says, do I not fill the heaven and earth? Yes, God, you do. He fills everything. So God is always everywhere. Here's the second thing. God cannot be contained because God is so powerful and so big. He cannot be measured or limited or captured. Second Chronicles chapter two, verse six is in the Old Testament. And here's what it says. But who is able to build him a house? And he's talking about him. He's talking about God. So I'll say it this way. But who is able to build God a house since heaven? Even the highest heaven cannot contain him. Who am I to build a house for him except as a place to make offerings before him? What the author is talking about there is this. He's like, I can't build a house to contain God. All of heaven, and not just like the heaven like sky, not just heaven like space, but all the heavens, everything cannot contain him. 
God cannot be contained. Here's the third thing. We are not separated from God by distance, ever, but by our hearts. When we disobey God, which is called sin. Okay, stick with me. Okay, you ready? When we feel far away from God, it's not because God has changed. It's not because God has moved. It's not because God's presence has uh, left us alone. No, it's because our hearts have changed and our attitudes have changed. See, sin keeps us from being close to God the way that we want to be close to our parents or a good friend. If you hurt your friend's feelings, guess what? You feel kind of distant. If you disobey your parents, guess what? You don't, you don't talk to them as much. You're not as close to them because you know you've hurt their feelings. It's not because you're not close to them physically, but you hurt them in your heart and with your attitude. It's the same with us. God doesn't move. God doesn't go away. He is everywhere all the time. And so when we feel distant from God, it's not because God has physically moved. It's because our attitude and our heart and our worship isn't focused on him. And it's because we sin. And when we sin, it makes us feel far from God. See, uh, check this out. In James chapter 4, verse 6, it says, But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You're like, what does that mean, Pastor Eric? Here's what it means. God opposes the proud means that God doesn't like it when we are prideful, when we disobey, when we act like we're better than other people. Or that we know more than him. He doesn't like that. Instead, he gives grace to the humble. And people who practice humility are people who put God number one. You remember our Ten Commandments from a couple, well, last month? Remember what commandment number one was? There's only what? One God. Remember what commandment two was? Do not have worship an idol. Don't put anything ahead of God. Hmm, that's really good. That's really deep, guys. All right, here we go. Last thing. God can always hear our prayers. He always hears. See, God can always hear our prayers. Those thoughts we speak and also the thoughts we think, he knows all of it. So, in the book of Psalm 139, verse 4, we talked about this last week. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. So, why did I put that one in there? Well, because you don't have to be at church to worship God or to pray. In fact, you're practicing that right now, guys. You know that wherever you're watching right now, you are worshiping God. A while ago, we prayed to God together, which is kind of what I talk about with family. Whether your friends or family are in Thailand or whether they're in other parts of Texas or whether they're in Australia, it doesn't matter. Wherever you are, God is. And whenever you're, wherever you're at, you can pray. So you can pray at school. You can pray in the car. You can pray in the shower. You can pray in the bed. You can pray in the backyard. You can pray on the mountain. You can pray underwater. You can pray in space. You can pray anywhere because God is everywhere. Woo! Okay, here we go. You ready? So what does this teach us about God? Here we go. You ready? There's no place you can go where God is not present. There's no place you can go where God's presence isn't there. And that is fantastic news, guys. So what does it teach us to do? I like to say it this way. Be brave. Guys, be brave. Be brave in the way you pray. Be brave in the way that you act. Be brave in the way that you think. Be brave in the way that you tell other people about God and his love. Because God is always with you. Because God is, you ready? everywhere. And knowing that God is everywhere, it should make us brave. I hope you're brave. I hope that more and more you learn about God, the braver you are in your faith. Okay, so going deeper. I mean, we're going pretty deep already, but here's the deal. You ready? You can be confident of God's presence in your life anywhere you go. It's kind of what we just talked about. But you can be confident when you're going to a place that makes you nervous. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't like to give blood. Right? I don't mind shots when they give me shots in my arms. But when they take blood out of me to test my blood, it makes me a little nervous. But you know what? 
When I walk into that room and see that nurse who's going to take my blood, I can be confident knowing that, guess what? God is in there. Or maybe it's a test. You're nervous about a test at school. Guess what? God is there. Or maybe it's when you're playing basketball in the basketball game. Or maybe it's at nighttime when you're getting ready for bed and maybe you're in your room all by yourself getting ready to go to sleep. And you may be a little nervous. Guess what? God is there. Because God is, well, he's everywhere, guys. Hey, listen, there's another song I want you to sing. It's a newer one for us to share together. It's not a new song. It's an older worship song. But here's what it's called. How Great Is Our God. And you know what? All these attributes we're talking about are talking about exactly that, about how great God is. Let's sing that together, okay? questions I ask at the end of our lesson to make sure that you are paying attention and to see how well you can remember what we talked about. Here we go. You ready? Question number one. Our main idea says that everyone needs to know who blank is. A. God. B. Jesus. C. The Holy Spirit. Or D. God the Father. Now you might say, Pastor Eric, all these seem like right answers. Yes, they do. But the main idea uses one of these specifically. Five, four, three, two, one. If you answered A, you'd be right. That's exactly right. Everyone needs to know who God is. Well done. Here we go. Question number two. Our scripture today was found in the book of blank. Peter, Psalms, Proverbs, or Philippians. Now, here's the deal. I'll give you a hint. It starts with a P. Ha <laughs> All right, you ready? Five. Four, three, two, one. That's right, guys. It's in the book of Psalms. Well done. All right, here we go. Question number three. Last week, we learned that God is blank. A, all-powerful. B, everywhere. C, all-loving. Or D, all-knowing. You have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. That's right, guys. It's D. It's all-knowing. Now, we've learned all four of these, but last week, last week we learned about God knowing everything. 
All right, here we go. Question number four. Because God is everywhere, he can always hear my blank. A, voice. B, thoughts. C, prayers. D, concerns. Hmm. Five, four, three, two, one. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, trick question. Guess what, guys? All four of those. Because God is everywhere, he can hear our voice. He can know our thoughts. He can hear our prayers. And he even knows when we're worried. He knows all of that. Okay, so here we go. Last one, number five. Here it is. I can feel far away from God when I blank. I can feel far away from God when I, A, go scuba diving. B, sit alone in the dark. C, disobey him, which is called sin, or D, am asleep. Which one can make me feel far away from God? You got five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. That's right, guys, when I sin. When I disobey God, it's called sin, and it can make me feel far away from him. Even though I'm not, it can make me feel that way. Well, guys, I hope that you got all five right. I hope that you have been encouraged with your faith today, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Bye.